Okay, let's welcome uh, the YouTube family who are joining us live on YouTube. Greetings, greetings, family. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Sister Shanice Show. As you can see, we have our guest, Dr. Rev Philippe Shop Matthews in the house. And we are also joined by uh, some wonderful people on YouTube, uh, sorry, on uh, Zoom as well. I have put the Zoom link in the YouTube community channel link. So if you would like to join us live uh, via Zoom, you are able to do so. My computer's running a little slow. Certainly hope that do doesn't uh, interfere with the broadcast today, but you know how we do it. We press ahead regardless. So uh, we're recording and I can always edit the recording afterwards. So hold on to your seats, family. We are in for a dynamic, fantastic, blacktastic show tonight. Uh, if you missed part one, you need to catch up. Uh, part one is on the channel. And uh, we are honored because of popular demand to have our beloved brother, Dr. Rev Shock Matthews, back in the house again with a part two. The topic, systemic racism as a technology, the science that interrupts second frequency signaling. We need to know how to interrupt second frequency signaling, do we not? They've been interrupting our frequency for far too long. Wow, wow, wow. Just before we came live, you know, we were liaising with our young brother, Yoshi, in the house as well, a talented young artist. Google his name, check out some of his works. He's got a track coming up, Prisoners of War. He's done a track for Dr. Rev. You know, we saw that last strong. Was it last strong we saw that? Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. So awesome to have you in the house. And, uh, uh, our brother news, the regular caller uh, to my radio show as well. So, and now even has a spot on my radio show talking about spirituality, deeply insightful stuff. So great to have you in the house. I can see we've got uh, Miriam in the house as well. Welcome. Welcome, Miriam. See some of our beautiful family members. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to don't forget Dr. Clyde. Our don't guest. forget Dr. Clyde Winters. Where is he? Where's he? He's gone? got his cameras on. He's You're got his camera off, but he's here. <laughs> he's in the house. Dr. Clyde Winters is indeed in the house. Just not got his camera on uh, at this moment. But hey, <laughs> call his name and he appears. I love it. Dr. Clyde, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Don't you just love Dr. Clyde? So uh, thank you. Great to have you in the house. And to everyone else in the house that doesn't have their camera on, we welcome you. We welcome you. Okay. So um, as I said, my camera, uh, my my computer does tend to behave a little slower than usual um, when I've got Zoom on. Not sure why that is. It's probably because it's just packed with some of so many videos and everything. Uh, but uh, what I'd like to do uh, when my camera allows me is to, or my computer allows me, is to spotlight uh, our special guest, Dr. Rev Philippe Shock Matthews. Apologies uh, for putting your name <laughs> the wrong way around. Why apologies? Oh, How it's okay. are you? Just don't call me late for dinner. That's all I'm saying. I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing phenomenally well, my beloveds. How's everyone oh, doing? We're good. We're good. Thank you so much. And uh, how's life in the USA right now? Uh, what uh, are the latest developments? Absolutely insane. Absolutely mm -hmm. insane. Too much to even talk about. It's it's just white people have lost their minds. They're losing their minds. They're losing their power. They're dying off at rapid rates. And this is what it looks like. This is what chaos and the end of a of a species, this is what it looks like. Oh, this is what it wow. looks like. They get the more wow. and more violent. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to see more of this happening. So it's going to crescendo before it levels off. There. Thank you so much. And uh, 
Phone on mute. Oh, that's 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 actually me. Um, let me just mute YouTube that's going on in the background. Oh, ah, apologies for that. Audio. You think I would learn my own message? <laughs> mute site. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> don't follow me everybody make sure you put your <laughs> devices on mute <laughs> so they're, they're dying out at a rapid rate in the usa right now well it's called, well worldwide worldwide it's called excess mortality and excess mortality is when a group of people uh die suddenly um and rapidly uh over and above whatever the regular death rate of that country or of that population might be so you're seeing mm -hmm. exceptional violence uh, from this group. You know, Dr. Phil, years ago, he said, the other Dr. Phil, <laughs> he said, the best uh, prediction uh, of future behavior is past behavior. So the, the, if there's such a thing as beauty in this, we know what to expect. So we're not looking for any type of surprises for, from them. They're going to act up and act out in the way that they uh, have been since they emerged out of the caves. Mm. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go deep into the science known as memetics and how race technology actually moves. What's the science? What is the genetics that's in all of us, all, every human being, that moves and causes an idea to become viral, to become a virus, to become a thought virus? Thoughts are things. So mm. there is an actual component to that. Wow, certainly looking forward to that discussion and that presentation. So, you know, let's get started. So let me introduce to you, those of you who, I don't know where you could have been if you don't know this great man, Dr. Rev Shock Matthews, who's been a guest on my show a few times before. We've been privileged and honored to have, have him as a guest on my show before. He is the founding minister at First Frequency of Oneness science, manifestation, and prosperity. Uh, Philippe Shock Matthews is a social entrepreneur with over 7 million views on YouTube. Wow, wow, wow. Eight I'm now, 8.5 now. <laughs> We're at 8.5. Oh wow. <laughs> not a lot, not a lot. We're working on a it. A very popular, it. very popular YouTuber indeed. And that's because the messages that he brings are from another play. Uh, previous shows on, on, on this channel have included the metaphysical ideology of generational genetic uh, trauma, the impact of second frequency, psychopathic behavior on black people, understanding and managing emotional intelligence. You know, check out the channel for some great works from Dr. Philippe Shock Matthews himself, Frequency of Oneness, specialized specialism in science, the manifestation of prophecy. Uh, the word shock stands for seeking higher omnipotent conscious or cosmic knowledge. Wow. So that gives you the kind of metaphysical plane that this great man is on. He's affectionately named by the community as the metaphysical Morpheus because he has a unique ability to shock us as a people out of our false racial identities. And do isn't that just what we need right now? So he's going to shock us back into our right mind because wow, 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 we are the original first frequency of oneness people. But, you know, we are out of our right mind right now as a people. So the metaphysical Morpheus man is gonna be doing his work. You can also find some of his works on his own YouTube channel, on uh, Spotify, on Amazon. He's an author, he's a writer, wow, 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 social entrepreneur, internationally renowned speaker. We are honored beloved, to have you on our channel today. Let me graciously hand over the floor to you. Wow, what an introduction. I'm so glad I wrote that. Uh, now, <laughs> that came out, you read that perfectly. I was like, wow, this guy really sounds amazing. I'd like to meet him one day, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, so thank you for that, beloved. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't got no damn sense. Uh, thank you for that, beloved <laughs> goddess, Sister Shanice. Love you, love your platform, love what you do and give to the to the community. 
Uh, and so we're back with part two. I'm going to share my screen. We'll get get started here. Let's see. I think this is it. You will let me know if you can see what I see. Uh, are you able to see my full screen PowerPoint right now? Yes, we're seeing your full screen right now. Okay, let me minimize everyone over there and let's get started. So this presentation is dedicated to my four spiritual mothers and my auntie, Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman at the top left, taught me that you are the thinker who thinks the thought that makes the thing. Reverend Dr. Helen Carey to her right, Reverend Dr. Mary Tumpkin, lower left, Reverend Dr. Barbara King in the middle, and of course our favorite auntie, Nana, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. Rest in power, my beloved, my beloved goddesses. Wouldn't be able to do what I do without your existence. Thank you, uh, thank you to the ancestors, Ashe. Okay. This is going to be, all, all of my work is brought to you by uh, firstfrequencyresearch.com. Uh, so it's our research fund. If you love what we're doing, if you love the content, uh, if you love the research, the hardcore research that we do, what we bring to the table is different, it's new. Uh, and if that's something that uh, uh, you would like to support, you may do so uh, by going to our first frequency of research, uh, dot com and, and uh, becoming a part of uh, this amazing research. So we can also share with you some of the research that we're doing, some of the upcoming things that I'm working on uh in terms of, of of research and what's going to be pivotal for black people moving forward so we'll have a strategy as to what to do and protect ourselves as second frequency begins to uh absolutely lose their minds so if, if you don't know of me uh first frequency of oneness we help create a spiritual psychological and emotional barrier from the hidden signal of racial battle fatigue and racialized domestic terror we remove Black people from the effects of their false racial identities called third and fourth frequencies. Uh, we help Black people overcome their trauma bond, capture bond, and Stockholm syndrome to whiteness. Uh, we are a culturally specific uh, teaching ministry or movement, so we're exclusively for Black people. White people can watch, but don't ask a damn question. Uh, we specialize in healing and removing the ancestral, historical, and incarnate trauma. Uh, with Black people, as well as we help our people reveal and restore their natural, original first frequency signal and vibration. Uh, this work is based on uh, the African science methodology known as Tep Haseb, not self-esteem. So we're not here to necessarily make you feel good and be motivational and rah rah sis boom bah. We come with hardcore scientific uh, evidence why we are the best of the best uh, and how to begin revealing that best of the best within us. We're a teaching ministry, not uh, a preaching ministry. Metaphysical Morpheus, that's me, Reverend Dr. Philippe Jacques Matthews. I've got a doctorate in metaphysical science and philosophy, founding minister of First Frequency of Oneness Science Manifestation. Shock, yes, stands for Seeking Higher Omnipotent Conscious or Cosmic Knowledge. I'm the founder of the Shock Metaphysics uh, Virtual Comedic Wisdom School, former host of the Philippe Matthews Show, and I've authored over 25 books, special reports, and seven bestsellers. All right, so let's get into part two. The science of memetics, thought viruses that make race technology move. So <clears throat> questions that must be asked and answered in relation to systemic racialized terror and white supremacy. What was the driving force <clears throat> that allowed white people to be invented as a divide and conquer strategy that became an accepted way of life? How did white supremacy spread so rapidly and successfully for so long? What moved individuals, communities, and children to subject another group to racial terror? In my opinion, systemic racialized white supremacy as a race technology has been the longest running, most successful acts of terror in world history. For these answers, we must look into what's known as the science of memetics. According to Dr. Susan Blackmore, <clears throat> who I interviewed decades ago when I first got into the science of memetics, she's a psychologist, lecturer, writer, and one of the foremost researchers 
<clears throat> and experts on the science of memetics. And a meme was coined in 1976 by uh, zoologist Dr. Richard Dawkins in his best selling book, The Selfish Gene. Now, memetics is the study of how memes move, how they replicate, how they duplicate, and how they imitate, and is based on evolutionary psychology. Now, a meme is a basic unit of cultural transmission or imitation, as well as a unit of information. So it's thoughts. A thought is uh, not a thing yet until you share it with another brain. When you share it with another brain, that's memetical, because now that idea has left you, and now it's communicating, and that meme now has infected this the other person that you're talking to. And then, of course, as you begin to expand that thought, that idea, uh, it moves amongst the people. So an idea can catch on and become viral, making it, making it a distinct, memorable unit of cultural transmission. And so a meme could be an idea, it could be a behavior, or it could be a style. A meme is a pattern of information that is held in a person's memory and has the capacity to be copied and replicated into another person's memory. Memetics then would be the science, both empirical and theoretical, that studies the evolution of memes and how they spread, replicate, and duplicate. Now, Dr. Daw Dawkins suggests a meme is a selfish gene due to the fact that they always act in their own best interests, which is replication. So, Blackmore says that all memes, they all they want to do is to be passed on to the next generation. So what you're looking at <clears throat> and what's been discovered, this is the genetic component of how we share our ideas. So if we go back in time to our oracles, uh, to uh, I forgot there's another term for the oracles, but because we would speak and we would teach and the elders would teach us, those were that was memetical transmission. What we what we didn't know is that thoughts are things. When we make a thought or have a thought, there's a little droplet of neurotransmitter <clears throat> that occurs that activates that thought. So it actually is something genetic that can be looked at and can be studied. So a mean is a gene, but it's the gene that replicates and duplicates itself. So every thought, every word that is a, is a meme that wants to replicate and duplicate and get out and, and infect as many people as possible. It's how we learn. It's how we mastered all of the sciences memetically. We memetically created uh, what we're gonna show uh, in a moment called meme plexus ideas, clusters of ideas that created all of the ologies that created Timbuktu, that created all of the sciences that we uh, still study today. Now, using a blending of the Greek word uh, mimine, which means something imitated with the English word gene, evolutionary biologist Dawkins abbreviates mimine to mean. So successful memes could be scientific ideas that catch on and propagate themselves around the world by jumping from brain to brain. So every time you turn on your device, your television, every time you read a book, every time you read an article, anything that grabs your attention, that's a meme, that's memetic. Uh, if it's, it could be a billboard, it could be a book, it could be a YouTube video like we're, we're doing right now is memetic transmission because you are learning and I'm sharing information with you some of you might share that information with others. And of course, we don't know how many thousands of, and hopefully millions of people will be able to see this. That means that that meme that I'm sharing today will have a certain level of longevity as well as duplication and replication value. So let's talk about meme plexus. Now a meme plex or a, a meme complex is a group or a cluster of symbiotic synergistic memes that work together. So religion is considered a mean plex, infecting whole societies with a belief in God or an afterlife. Colonialism is a mean plex, 
It's a group of ideas to oppress, suppress uh, uh, African people. Anti-miscegenation, which that is the uh, at the top right uh, on the top photo, is the actual anti-miscegenation law uh, that is uh, written uh, in colonial times that that show the sep the creation of white people. Uh, the privilege, the private law that will be uh, uh, given to white people and how African people are now at the bottom uh, in that uh, understanding of anti-messagination. And as you know, I think I shared it last time I was here. Uh, I shared it so many times, but three laws of anti-messagination. The first law, there was a cluster of laws, but the top three laws that brought us to this conversation today is a person of African descent could no longer vote or run for office. A person of African descent could no longer uh, 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 own guns or, or gunpowder. Uh, and thirdly, a person of African descent <clears throat> could not uh, take any type of legal action against this new designation, a false designation of humanity called white people. So you can begin to understand that this memeplex is what moves the race technology. You know, you know, race technology is classifying, stating, uh, mixing, and spacing. What moves the race technology is the mean plex and the mean plex, and this is what creates the automation and how it's able to replicate, duplicate, how it has had longevity. And so, as I looked into this science and started reverse engineering, understanding the power of memes, that we absolutely can create what's known as a counterintelligence, a counter mimetic or, or, or memeplex process to interrupt the signal of whiteness and white supremacy because it's, it's an idea, it's not genetic. And so an idea can be infiltrated, an idea can be interrupted, an idea uh, and ideology <clears throat> can, can change. And that's what we are collectively, we're not really having that conversation we're mostly talking about what we can do spiritually and what we can do in Egypt and how we can all come together as Africans. That's great. But we need the science of how do we strategically do almost like a COINTELPRO, a spiritual, memetically driven signal interruption against this group to counter this, this, this invasion that has uh, invaded every aspect of our bodies. The invention of white people in America, which gave birth to white supremacy, uh, a mimetic ideology is, is, is a memeplex. Social Darwinism, uh, back to the race technology and classifying, Linnaeus and Blumenbach, when they were like, oh, the whites are at the top and have the biggest and best beautiful skulls from the Caucasus Mountains, and here are the Negroids over here. That's classification, that's race technology. It's driven mimetically. So race technology is a memeplex, and we're gonna go into deep uh, deeper understanding of that. So. Just looking at religion, if we were to use Catholicism as an example of a successful religious memeplex that proselytizes its congregants and followers to have more children than its competitors, such as uh, Calvinism and uh, 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 Angelicalism. When this memeplex successfully replicates by causing children to take on, me on the means of their parents to have more children than other religious or dogmatic uh, indoctrinating memeplexes, that would be a successful example. Highland says we can predict that after sufficient time, that meme will dominate in the population. So we have the ability uh, community to create thought viruses uh, that will grossly impact, infect and affect second frequency signaling. But we have to know the science. We have to have a mastering of our language. Dr. Winters talks about this all the time in terms of, of, of mastering our language. And interestingly enough, in this paragraph where it talks about how, um, uh, where is it, uh, where uh, children uh, uh, take on the memes of their parents. So the parent to child uh, mimetic transmission is known as vertical transmission. So that's the first uh, time that you start to learn language and that language and those memes, which are thoughts and ideas, start to develop and become a thing in your brain. So it's your parents that is first 
gives you that vertical transmission that socializes you for the environment based on the axiology of how the environment has shaped the values of that particular culture. So there are two types of memes, exotoxic memes, which are harmful to others, autotoxic memes, which are harmful to the host or to the self. Whiteness, supremacy ideology, colonialism, race technology, the ma'afa are all exotoxic meme plexes that have been harmful to first frequency people. When exotoxic meme plexes are turned inward, it creates autotoxic meme plexes that create self-harm and self-hate, and it destroys first frequency people from the inside out. So we actually now have uh, the process to understand exactly why and how Black people have turned on each other and turned on ourselves and how and why we self-hate. It's because we're, ru we're running and operating a meme plex, which is a vocabulary of self-oppression based upon the oppression that has been socially engineered mimetically through generations to cause us to be uh, discombobulated, not be able to think our way out of our situations and tragedies and, 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 and problems. Now, this is also the, the, the mean plex of CAIDS. CAIDS, as Dr. Winters talks about and teaches us culturally acquired uh, identity or immune uh, 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 syndrome is where third frequency and fourth frequency begins to the Negro and the, and the, 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 the lower, the N word, if you will, begins to want some level of access uh, to whiteness. That's a mean plex that's running that has to be interrupted. So we have a autotoxic uh, mean plex that's running in us that causes us not to love ourselves, causes us to not to trust ourselves. And if we can't trust ourselves and love ourselves, how can we then <clears throat> trust and love each other? So you're beginning now to see there is a science behind this and there's something that we can do about it. So we're not helpless, hopeless people. Now, <clears throat> a great example of an autotoxic uh, meme would be military indoctrination, uh, martyrdom, uh, or what is known as the Jim Jones meme. Um, so I remember having a conversation with Dr. Ray Hagens, and Ray uh, was telling me about uh, his indoctrination process when he went to military uh, as a Marine, and how they break you down uh, uh, and 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 uh, remove uh, any sense of self and identity. And they program you. And then, of course, he moved from there, came out of there, and he became a police officer in Ohio for over 20 some odd years as a chaplain. Uh, and he had to begin reprogramming himself. And by doing so, he recognized this level of indoctrination. So there's a reason why uh, and, and this is an interesting statistic, by the way. Uh, law enforcement, to be a police officer in America, it's the only uh, job uh, on the planet that uh, requires only a GED or a general uh, education uh, diploma to uh, have a badge and to, and, and, and to kill someone. So just let's just be with that for a moment. Now, uh, I come from a GED, so I know when I was at that level and at that age where I was getting my GED, I was an absolute idiot. I had no social awareness. Uh, I was I was a child. I was absolutely a child, and this is why they want military people and law enforcement people, particularly, to come in young and dumb, meaning illiterate, not well-versed, not, uh, you know, no, no vocabulary, no sense of self. Why? Easier to program to keep this race technology and these mean plexes in place. So the moment you start thinking, you wouldn't probably go and do that level of work because if you start to think and you're able to get an education and get out, you're going to probably go into a different career choice. Plus, as a PhD now, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not going to do it because I can't be controlled. So that's why young people 
are the most vulnerable. And when they create poverty, when they create financial lack and limitation in a community, they do that intentionally because that's where the food comes from, the food that that serves the elite. Now, that food uh, is our uh, lack of ability to uh, move ourselves. Think about the anti-miscegenation. Some of us can't vote uh, and run for office, run for office. Some of us can't. Uh, eat and protect our families. So the mean plexes are in place. They're replicating and duplicating. The race technology is in place. It's replicating and duplicating. And so we have to be able to create what Dr. Marie Charles refers to as first sight consciousness. First frequency people, we see things in first sight consciousness. So that means seeing the unseen. Dr. Winters did a, a whole show on making visible the invisible. Now, when you look at the science of the Dogon, the Dogon teaches us uh, uh, Jiriso, Biniso, Boloso, and Sodai, the side word, the full word, the back word, uh, and Sodai. Now, that is first sight consciousness. First sight consciousness being able to see under something over something, behind something, and the side of it, so that you have a full view as to what it is. 99% of us only see one side. And so understanding that the reason that Amma gave us this gift, because we're the people who can do this, is so that we can survive uh, any level of enemy. Remember, I talked about this, I think, last time I was here, that the nervous system, it will sense danger long before it transfers to the brain. So long before you speak or say something or, or even flee, your body already knows you're in danger. Well, that's that jiri so, bini so, bolo so, the forward, the backward, and the sideward that's automatically activating inside of us to let us know we're in a situation and that causes us to racially, we have to racially socialize. What does that mean? It means sometimes we code switch. Sometimes we act differently around them versus how we act amongst ourselves. And so that is part of what makes us a perfect people is because we can't be defeated. We can't be, uh, 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 we, we see you. Right, we, we, we say this all the time, we see you, we see them, we see the core of them, but that's what first sight consciousness means. Now, Nazism, white supremacy, eugenics, race technology, systemic racism, all would be considered exotoxic because it's dangerous to us. It's dangerous to the other people who are the, on the opposite side of that mean place. And so white supremacy, all of the laws that have ever been written are mean plexes. Those are mean plexes that get replicated and duplicated as law, as a matter of law. And that's what we have to interrupt. Dr. <clears throat> Winters and Marie Charles teaches us about the, the three H's, uh, Herschel, Heidinger, and Herschel, Heidinger, and Hegel. These are the, the quote unquote enlightened scientists that wrote and created the mean plex. Again, this is the stating aspect of race technology that said, oh, Africans, they have no culture. They're nothing. And they're nothing without us. We are their gods. So we, as scholars, researchers, uh, we are writing and countering that narrative. So that paper that I wrote on race technology, all of the papers, the 200 plus papers that Dr. Winters has written, all of that counters this narrative and this mean plex. So what we're doing, whether we're writing about it, whether we're speaking about it, whether we're doing PowerPoints about it, all of it is necessary as a counter to the signaling of second frequency uh, within the race technology and within uh, the mimetic transmission. So exotoxic means destroy the people that the host is promoting. So they are the host, promoting an exotoxic meme. And Grant says particularly, those who ca are carriers of rival memes. So we are considered the rivals of their meme plex. They're considered rivals of our meme plex. But here's the problem. We don't have a cogent, cohesive meme plex. Uh, and so as a result, 
we end up using um, a lot of their spellings that we think are counters, but it's actually harming us. Give you an example. Nothing is wrong with black people. Something happened to black people. That's a meme, right? Because it stops you. It's an idea. It, it, it travels. And we're going to go into the three aspects of what makes a meme move. But it is a meme that interrupt. It stops you in that when you're in the throes of whiteness, white supremacy, signal interruption, micro, macroaggressions, racial battle fatigue, all of these terms uh, that, that, that we use from the assault, when you hear nothing's wrong with you, something happened to you, now you're going to stop, you're going to freeze that signal, and it's no, now it's suspended. Now you have an ability to analyze that signal as opposed to uh, just play that tape or play that 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 digital meme plex that's constantly telling you you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you'll never get out, you're not smarter than they are, all of these things. It interrupts the signal and brings you back to first frequency and first sight consciousness. So what makes a meme plex move? The first piece is, and write this down if you can, fidelity. How powerful, effective is the original thought virus that would cause that meme or meme plex to have fecundity? Fecundity is how many times can this meme or meme plex be replicated or duplicated? How many copies can this meme make, which means going viral? So uh, earlier, uh, Sister Shanice uh, was reading one of my older bios that said I had 7 uh, million views. I think we're at 8.5 or 8.6 uh, views currently with 60,000 subscribers. Okay, so that's fecundity. How many times can my message be replicated and duplicated? And how long and how many times can that grow? So longevity is how long has this uh, meme or meme plex, how long will it last? How long, how long will it last depends upon, will it be one generation? Will it be multiple generations? Uh, and that is going to be based on the on on the first part, fidelity. How strong is that thought virus? Nothing's wrong with black people. Something happened to black people. Well, that's powerful because it will go on for quite some time because it has a high level of of replication. It has a high level of fecundity, right? So this is the science that I use behind marketing, uh, understanding how to. Uh, take someone and take them viral, how to take a book to a bestseller like I used to do with Kaba's books or Dr. David Imhotep's books when they were my clients and I would take them to number one on Amazon. There was a process memetically driven that did that. And there was a fecundity and a fidelity. And so I understood the science of the language and how to use certain words that would, would trigger certain emotions and this is also known as branding and positioning. I learned a lot of this also from years ago. I used to sit down, uh, 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 I had three pivotal meetings with Stedman Graham uh, back at NBC Towers, uh, where his offices were. So when I was coming up as a, a, with my dot-com and power bag, and he would sit me down and he was, he's the marketing genius behind actually Oprah. And he would tell me about how uh, they strategized and branded and positioned Oprah to be this unique uh, voice in this huge space uh, of, of daytime talk. And at that time, that was Donahue's world. That was, he was the God, he was the king. Nobody can go up against Donahue. Of course, the structure and the science that they used, they didn't know this was memetics that actually ended up knocking Donahue out of his uh, 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 rank, made Oprah number one in the world. So. This is the formula that we all need to follow when we are creating thought viruses, when we're creating ideas, when we're sharing ideas. How powerful is that original idea? How powerful is that original thought? Sometimes that original thought, like the meme, plex, like the meme of nothing's wrong with Black people, something happened to Black people. When I take that and I take the four frequencies, I take the four traumas, I take the four histories, uh, I take Tepa Seb, I take social sciences, when I take all of these other memes and combine them, 
under one heading, under one umbrella, that's the mean plex known as first frequency of oneness, okay? So hopefully that makes some kind of sense for you. In conclusion, there is now a psychobiological component to systemic racism, race technology, and white supremacy, but not from the mere prejudice of skin color or African origin, but from the biological component of the selfish gene known as memetics that activate race technology. If the success of race technology or systemic racism is driven by memetics, then it is quite logical that the principles of first frequency mysticism, metaphysics, African sacred science, if produced and practiced correctly, can override and lift all Africans and African-Americans above the race technology of systemic racism by the creation of a new or counter meanplex both individually and collectively. This process is known within the four frequencies framework as signal interruption. Now, give you an idea of signal interruption. I did a show uh, where we were debuting uh, 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 Minister Imhotep al uh to our program, to our platform. As I was producing the stream yard, you see here I have different, uh, I, 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 uh, I channel to eight different channels or stream to eight different channels, five uh, uh, Facebook and, uh, groups uh, and, and, and pages, uh, along with LinkedIn, YouTube, and, and Twitter. And I can have multiple accounts and I can you know, change them in and out uh, any way I like. However, when I decided to put this show up, look at what, look at what memeplex we developed that Facebook rejected. Facebook said, failed to post to Facebook. Here's what Facebook said. Nothing is wrong with blackpeople.com. Your content could be, uh, could not be, couldn't be shared because the link goes against our community standards. Now you're beginning to see the actual race technology at play. You're beginning to see how these mean plexes are in the algorithms. The algorithms are meme plexes. That's all they are. That's all social me media is. It is how many memes or meme plexes can I inundate you with to keep you on this platform and keep you uh, buying uh, and, and being a consumer. All marketing, all consumerism is based on memetics. It's based on the science of, of how to manipulate people and to get everybody to think the same way within the group. So Facebook cannot stop the meanplex of first frequency people because I manipulated understanding algorithmic mathematics, which is algebra, but understanding SEL, search engine optimization. The next show I was able to counter this and ch change the wording uh, and the placement and the show went off without a hitch. So this is what we have to learn how to do. Don't get frustrated. Look at reverse engineer it. Look at the medical science behind it. Look at the race technology behind it. That was my clear view that we are a threat to Facebook. They don't want that word out. Nothing's wrong with black people. They don't want us to know that. They don't want the world to propagate that and start thinking along that because they know that's a powerful meanplex. All right. So go to the uh, nothing is wrong with black people.com and go to the free web series course uh, that I have up there. I'm going to be adding more content uh, in the in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but there's quite a bit uh, up there right now uh, that is absolutely going viral. Now, let's do this as we did last time. Family, understand the memes. A mean plex is also music. And one of the reasons why I'm so uh, excited about Yoshi Mod is because uh, his music can create a meme plex that I uh, that 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 can penetrate a market I can't access, right? So so when young people began to get this message, nothing's wrong with them, something happened to them. He decided to make a theme song about that, and this theme song is now going worldwide. So every time I play it. Uh, more people come on board, more people recognize, yeah, I want to hear that Yoshi Ma joint. And here it is, family.
Uh, we're not hearing anything, or I'm not. You're not able to hear it? No, no. Do, you might no. need to optimize. No, because I, I, when I shared my screen, let me stop sharing, I shared sound. So let's try that again. Ah, okay, might have went out. Okay, here we go. My bad. All right, so can you see that? Are you able to see my screen? Didn't see the screen, yes. You ain't got time to sit up and Let me know, can you hear that? Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I'm hearing it but now. Below me. I okay. ain't got time for that shit. I need to get to the promised land. I'm here to help trauma store it in the body. My ID, me, can you help? Ain't walking around with a head, nobody. Created this platform to teach and bring forth master teach and a lift our community and banish all the leeches. We ain't a dot or a nigga. Never grow. The thinker who thinks the thought, let the masses know. We are the first and maybe the last. One with nature, not a sin against nature. Looking sad. Uh, I lost my mom and my dad looking bad. Cooking chicken when it got me a mask. Because being broke and fit. It's never too late. You part of the greats. Let me rub off on you. Just remember it ain't your fault. I can give you all the tools. Nothing is wrong with black people. Something, Something happened, happened to black, black people. people. Come on. What? What? Nothing is wrong with black people. Uh. Tell him, Yoshi. What does that look like for you? Ooh. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you tired of complaining about white folks? Are you tired of complaining about black folks? I am one with first frequency, one with the first idea. I am one with the first born people. Come on. Ah, Shay, and so it is. Yes. Come on. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. What are you, people? Yes. Come on. Let's do it, fam. Something happened to black people. Uh. Nothing is wrong with black people. Something happened to black people. Rev shock. Rev shock. Rev shock. Rev shock. Rev shock. Rev shock. Yoshi Mod up in this place. Yoshi Mod up in this place. Put it together, family. Yoshi Mod. So let's do this. Uh, if you are looking for uh, a virtual place of safety uh, to have these deep uh, uh, research-based, uh, scientific-based conversations of how to do signal interruption, join our Patreon. It's a dollar, five dollars a month. Uh, it's the best place on the, on the planet uh, for information that I cannot share. Uh, particularly on the algorithms of social media, as you see, because Facebook and YouTube and all of them are trying to stop this message from getting out. Because I understand memetics, because I understand SEL, search engine optimization, because I understand algorithmic math mathematics, I know how to counter it and I know how to circumvent it and get the damn message out anyway. 
So mm -hmm. go to our Patreon and check us out. Uh, invoke the law of seven by reciting the affirmation of power, prosperity, and protection seven times a day, seven days a week. And here we go, family. I am one with first frequency. I am, I one, am with one with first frequency. I am one with the first thought idea. I am one with the first thought idea. I am one with the firstborn people. I am one with the firstborn people. I am one with the only one. I am one with the only one. Ashe. Ashe. And so it is. And so it is. Family, that's a mean plex that we do every every day. That's a mean plex, right? That's power. This is our power. It's time to signal and interrupt and get it back. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, wow. What a phenomenal presentation. Deeply insightful. We now need to have that conversation and big up, big up Yoshi as well at the end there. Uh, powerful performance. And uh, as you say, you know, he can reach another audience uh you know through the music and how many of us know songs from 20 30 years ago that you know we're still <laughs> singing away in our heads you know and how many of us know songs that actually moved us you know years ago maybe in our early teenage years or what have you that mm -hmm. really helped to shape us and so the power of music combined with the power of words and the messages that you're putting out there uh, Dr. Rev, phenomenal, phenomenal combination. Wow, wow, Thank wow. You, a presentation. Let, can I call on uh, uh, Dr. Clyde Winters, who we have in the audience, to join me in actually, you know, doing a bit of reflection there on uh, your presentation. What a presentation on, on the me plexes. Let's see if um, I, I can add Dr. Uh, Clyde Winters to. Uh, the spotlight here. This is my computer. And let me send a let me send Again. a shout out to Cheryl Lynn and to Kirion. I see y'all in the audience. Hey, hey, God and Goddess, love to see you. Thank you for showing up. Rise you know, up, rise up. <laughs> Again, again, this has been a, a fabulous presentation. So informative, and and it can help you grow. And again, the uh, genius. I tip my hat to the genius, Yoshi Mod. He's the man. He's the man. He can make. He makes the sounds. You know, he makes the sounds. You know, he makes one the day frequencies, you know, baby. One one day, one day we might even get one for, for Sister Janice's show. Because uh, hey! you know, she was trying to set him on fire. And I mean, hey, that'll help. But again, uh, <laughs> I, I I'm gonna have to come up with a meat flex. I'll have to come up with I'll have to talk to the <laughs> about getting a meat flex. Rise up, black people. Rise up. Yeah, we're gonna we'll get it. Rise we'll up, get it. Up. That's the and, fact. And we, we gotta get put in there. Wow, 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 wow. I love yeah, we gotta wow, that's wow, that wow. is Sister Shadi. That's how the song should open. Wow, wow, wow. We know that's Sister Shadi's wow, song wow. right there. That's her joint. That's her joint right there. We no doubt. Again, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, uh, Dr. Matthews, thank you, thank you again for, for really sharing with us some of this uh, wonderful knowledge. You know, because we need it, we need thank it. Thank you, Barbara. And uh, and and you and Sister Shanice ha has presented a show that can really help heal us. And and we do need healing. We do need healing because every day we get this. Every day we get these memes, these, this garbage, and and this mm -hmm. garbage is, is just putting us into a very difficult position. You know. And, uh, and and because of the fact that that uh, we have all this knowledge, it's kind of very hard on us. And uh, but but we have to find a way, in a sense, to fight it. And that's that's why we needed this show. We needed this show, because see, a lot of times they 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 inflict on our brain every day media from the medium to to really help us to feel ashamed of ourselves, help us to to feel that we should. Uh, uh, keep each other down. Help us to feel uh, negative. And you know, uh, uh, Reverend Matthews, what do you what do you think is the uh, is the main is the main meme that they present to us that inflicts upon us a lot of this racial battle for? Yeah, it's hard enough going out there. But what do you think is the main meme that they use to really help to pollute our mind? Well, one of the one of the memes uh, that that you can feel is the meme that we are inferior, mm. right? So inferiority 
is a meme and a meme plex that they keep putting out there. They keep by showing we can kill you and not and and and, and have no remorse for it whatsoever. That's a meme, and that can be interrupted. That signal can be interrupted. Now, as we raise in frequency and vibration into first sight consciousness, we will then begin to start thinking strategically as opposed to reactively. Our problem is that uh, because this, this, this second frequency signal, these micro and macro aggressions are constantly on us, we don't get a chance to think. We're in survival mode all the time. When you are able to step back and think the memes and the meme plexus or the counter memes and meme plexus will automatically begin to show up. It is no accident that uh, all of you resonate with this message. There's no accident that uh, when y'all somehow somewhere heard nothing's wrong with black people, something something happened to black people, your eyebrow raised up or a hair, <laughs> the hair in the back of your neck went up because there's a truth to my eye. And understanding that if uh, truth recognizes itself, even when it can't be articulated, in other words, if you don't have the vocabulary, you have a feeling that yeah, this, this, this makes sense to me. This might be the actual thing that can restore me and heal me because none of us should be uh, struggling financially. None of us should be in poverty. None of us should be in uh, broken relationships and families. That is a mean plex that has destroyed us. But because we are in uh, this critical survival mode, we don't have the opportunity to do what Dr. Winters does and do a counterintelligence, a COINTEL pro to counter the signal of the mean plex. So we're going to sit down and we're going to develop I'm in the process of developing think tanks of great thinkers uh, that will create counter mean plexes uh, and understand and attack the misspellings of second frequency. Go ahead, Dr. Winters. Hopefully, I answered that question. Uh, yeah, you uh, you you answered it, uh, and and but it made me think about something else because uh, you know we again as 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 I said we always struck with these memes, and and you know it just amazes me how. How how first frequency second frequency can can create a meme that can just that can just bring you down just make you feel really Absolutely. low and, and and I know a lot of times I feel I'm I'm very strong I'm a man growing up as a as a uh, FBA in in the, in the United States you know yeah. your mom and everybody always says you got to be a man don't cry so most of the time we don't right. cry but but when you see things like what happened on that what happened on that 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 train in New York and and to see mm -hmm. and to see that that white guy that white guy choke somebody that's, that he he was twice his size, twice his size. Mm -hmm. and, and it yet, was a and murder. Then, it was a murder. He was a mercenary. It was a murder. And then, yeah. and then and then and then to see that they're giving him first degree manslaughter, right? And they're giving him almost two hundred million dollars. I mean, two million dollars. Two million dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And but you know what? What can we do to kind of fight that 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 that? That the effect of things like that, because that, that makes you go back to well, you know, that's what, what that is. That's called vicarious trauma, right? Okay. So, vicarious trauma is when you watch uh, an event of your people or somebody you care about, and somebody you love, be traumatized, brutally murdered, beaten, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it because you're not there physically, but you feel it. That is that that triggers vicarious trauma in the body now. Also, it triggers what's known as decontextualized and genetic trauma. Genetic trauma is the trauma that we come here with. That's the genetic memory of the meme plexus that's already installed inside our parents and great parents, great grandparents, and so on and so forth. It goes back 350 uh, years or, or, or 14 generations. Now, when we see something of us, when we see our people being violated and brutalized, it automatically triggers that decontextualized, that vicarious trauma or secondary trauma triggers our decontextualized trauma. Decontextualized trauma is trauma that doesn't have a time date or a timestamp. It's just lodged in the body and it makes us feel some kind of way, whether that's depression, oppression, suppression, not feeling good about ourselves. 
It's a multitude of behaviors. This is what happens when we see uh, uh, exotoxic memes, right? That's now because it went viral, of course it's going to go viral. It's designed to do that. There's a machine behind this race technology because what does that do every time we see it? It states, stating black people ain't worth nothing. A nigga ain't S-H-I-T, right? So we can kill them and they're nothing. So treat them like nothing and remind them that they're nothing. That's the lie that we have to counter. Now, how do we counter that? Well, we just did it. We counter it by uh, repeating the affirmation. We counter it by listening to music. We counter it by burning our incense and our oils. We counter it by creating our own mean plex that protects us. Because if you keep, and then of course, after you watch something like that, try not to watch it again. Because the more you do anything, the more you absorb that memeplex, that visual auditory memeplex, the more it seeps in and it causes more damage because it becomes autotoxic. Now we are feeling some kind of way. That memeplex now is, is harming us, is causing us to hate even more because we feel helpless and hopeless. And that's the goal. We're not helpless and hopeless. They want you to think that you're helpless and hopeless. You are not, we are not. But if nobody is around to tell you that, there's no uh, vertical, horizontal or oblique transmission. You're a victim of what you see. And this is why I think this message and this particular way in which I've developed a framework once it goes viral, it will automatically start to level off and change Black people's lives worldwide. Because again, this is not giving us self-esteem and making us feel good. This is giving us a tool, multiple tools, an arsenal to be able to counter the signal of second frequency, to be able to control them, right? Because one of you know, I I I I uh, I wasn't going to share the story, but I'll share it. Uh, Miriam uh, knows and Melinda. So my queen. Uh, Monday went into the hospital. So for 24 hours, I'm up uh, at the hospital with the queen. Uh, it's volatile out there at the hospitals because they don't like black people and they don't like treating black people with any level of integrity. Now, my queen is a nurse, uh, which also helps when we you know, I go in there and break the ice with them. But it was interesting because I know that I'm going into a hostile environment. My nervous system is already indicating you know, you, you, you're you're in the you're in a death camp. You're in a place where you can go in and might and might not come out. Okay, great. Now here's your queen. Let's go in. Uh, and so I always make the initiation to the security guard, uh, and uh, I I say something funny or or ca I, I cater to in a sense uh, his sense of authority. I, hey, how are you doing? I see they got you working hard here. Are they paying you enough? Boom. Hi, how you doing? Oh, it's, oh yeah, they don't pay me enough. You know what I'm talking about. You know they don't pay me. Oh, boom. So now I broke that memetic signal, right? So now he's giving me access to the entire ho hospital. Where do you need to go? Well, first of all, you need to go down. Let me, matter of fact, let me just take you myself, you see. So you learn how to manipulate them and break them down and they serve you just the same as they do to us. So that's a power, that's a superpower that we have the ability to do because AMA installed this technology and intelligence in all of us. I just happen to be the one to talk about it, but it, I, you, can't, you can't relate to anything that I'm teaching or saying unless it's already inside of you. So, so you already have the power. That's why as a minister, I tell people, we're all ministers. We're all philosophers. There's nobody high. It's more of a feudal system in, 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 in the way that I think. We are all amas in expression. We're all gods and goddesses in expression. There, there, there's no congregation out there, and then there's me, and I give you access to it. No, no, no. We all have access to it. We just have to understand how to use it, how to heal ourselves, and then how to manipulate the matter of the means of second frequency, because we are the magicians. We're the original magicians 
that mastered all magical systems and cosmological systems. So yes, it's installed in us, but they figured out how to keep interrupting us by killing us on, on screen and keeping us distracted and understand. That's why I don't, you notice, I don't necessarily do shows about it. When stuff happens, I don't readily talk about it. Why? Because I'm the counter to the signal. I don't need to put that out there. I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to give name or label to it because by doing so, I give it power. I give it credence. So I'm the counter to their intelligence or, or lack thereof. Uh, wow. Um, first of, yeah, I just want to quickly say, first of all, we want to send healing vibrations to your queen. Uh, Dr. Thank Ray. you. She's fine. She's out. Everything is great. Thank oh, you for that. But I just wanted to great. share that with you. I was exa yeah. I'm exhausted. I'm like going to take a nap. I'm so tired because I haven't had any mm -hmm. sleep. I had to come back and do a PowerPoint. I was like, oh my God, I got to get ready. So I knew what I wanted to talk about, but I had to put it in, any, in a PowerPoint any, presentation. Anytime, anytime you're anytime you uh, take your your a uh, uh, black woman to the doctor, let's face it, they they're finally admitting that that the medical, the medical thing, the medical thing here and in Britain, they they, they don't want to work with black women and they, they don't feel black women no. have any pain. They don't feel like no. having here. But I was wondering, uh, Neosi, you know, you, you know, you're a spiritualist. What a, what a, what is uh, you know, and how how would you how would you relate what uh what Reverend Matthews has talked about to this whole idea of African spiritualism? What does it relate? What do you, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> interesting questions, Sister Shanice, <laughs> Doctor Winter. Interesting question. I was thinking, uh. It does echo with, um, I would say, African culture, especially the DRC. For the count of me now to work as sung, sung by our brother Yoshimon, we would have to adapt it to the culture. He would have to sing it in one of the four languages, Kiswahili, Lingala, Chiluba, or Kikongo. And then the the uh, the count of me of uh, Dr. Shock would have to be you know, something happened to black people, we, we would have to adapt this also, not only to the local language, because the experience, whilst psychologically, it is very relevant to the DRC, to all parts of Africa, we have a slightly different uh, style of aggression coming from the second frequency, and that needs to be tailored. Uh, I noticed that on the clip, on the clip where the uh, song by, by the brother Yoshimod, um, you had the chopped hands by the Leopold II and his greed from uh, the Congo. You see, uh, this in itself, this image is uh, psychologically an attack. I mean, you, you can call it whatever you, you like psychologically. It was, for instance, reinforced on the ground by the troops of Leopold II by whipping, whipping uh, our ancestors, my direct ancestors who had passed, uh, because they, they're not paid their taxes. Their corpse had to be whipped in public because they owed money to the criminal Leopold II. But all in all, I would say in a place like DRC, uh, in its current state, young people would need uh, a singer like Yoshi to adapt it, as I said, to uh, our circumstances and sing it in uh, one of the four languages. And your, your message would have to be, if you like, uh, that's the message of um, uh, Dr. Shock. Your, okay. your, your ideas are relevant. They are in a very complicated English. We, we would have to uh, either make the English less convoluted or uh, adapt, it, adapt it to some kind of translation. Uh, mm. That's what I was going to say being myself uh well uh, i'm not putting myself forward but i am a translator interpreter uh, also someone who through the language understands 
the spirituality and what you what you say about the dogon uh, is very 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 relevant when you're talking about ama uh, if you ask this is the last thing that i would like to say i was talking this morning with uh, my queen sister shanice we are on the same vibration for africans first of all and you know in the continent and abroad to understand the makeup of uh, the land of the uh, ancestor we have to have the proper history being told who are the dogon for instance in relation to the ashanti in in, in relation to the congo you would you would find that that is something that even us uh, africans are not taught properly if you went to the dogon you ask their ancestors oh where do your own families ultimately come from you, you you went to the ashanti you went to the zulu you went to anywhere they would point out to one place in africa which is the great lakes region uh with that's physically uh any anthropologist would tell you that but the baka the pygmy people created the basis of whoever else spiritually, culturally is talking about. It. And it's important <clears throat> to get this, this chronology of uh, like birth because we are one people related, but we need to know the relation. So it would definitely work. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for that, I, I think so as well. I think there's a potential for some collaboration there. Uh, yeah. Saw, yeah. Uh, may, may I say uh, something on, on, on one part? I don't want to forget it, but he said something that was very profound, and that was the language is very complicated, and that is something that is actually designed that way. That's why I'm doing a 12-week course mm -hmm. right now on misspellings and dispelling the spells and how to counter the spells. They created this language uh, based upon stealing our magic systems and using it against us. So we developed, of course, our languages, but they took this language called English and they, I think uh, it is said that for every one word, it has five different meanings. And there are magic systems that they, this is the study of going into the dark ages and understanding their magic systems, understanding their psychology, understanding, quote unquote, their, their they didn't have a spiritual system, they had a uh, superstitious system, but understanding what they had to do to create a language of fraud, to be able to duplicate, to be able to counter uh, the signal of the original people and to keep that in perpetuity. One of the problems that's going to be faced is, and you mentioned, you said, now, do we take this current technology and do we uh, try to find uh, words to better translate it and and transcribe it to uh, the 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 original people on the continent, or do the original people on the continent need to learn this 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 language and this new way of thinking? Uh, I'm probably going to error and say that we need to have the continent master, you can't, okay, so you can't, you can't fight something if you don't know how to speak the language. You, you can't, if you don't know the language in linguistics, you can't conquer that, that group of people. So Dr. Winters has taught me, uh, kind of put me, kind of took me to another level when he said it. I haven't shared it with him yet, but Dr. Winters says, you have to learn how to master the English language because most of us don't understand and don't have a large psychological uh, uh, lexicon or psychological vocabulary. And so we don't understand what they're doing because we don't understand what they're saying. Dr. Edwin Nichols teaches us that how you reason to an answer is logic. So in order to have logic and to reason to an answer, you have to have and know linguistically that group. So let me give you an example. In law enforcement, regardless of the level, whether it's FBI, CIA, NSA, DOJ, uh, US Marshals, it, it, all of the intelligence gathering is based on 
knowing the language of that group. So if they want to infiltrate the Black Panther Party, which they did, what did they have to do? They had to learn the language. They had to learn the nuances. And uh, so, so I don't want to put a position on Africa that they have to learn this language so that they can counter the language, but understand it was language that defeated you. It's language that defeated us. And we need to master that language and the science of it so we can counter it. And that's really what this science is, is, is all about. And Dr. Winters, as one of the top researchers in the world, has taught me how to go and get that information uh, and how to take a deep dive. And then how, uh, because of my background in metaphysics, being a thinker that thinks the thought that makes the thing, I am able to take actually extremely complex uh, uh, ideas or meme plexes and simplify them into these PowerPoint presentations or what have you. And yes, it is, it's new. It's, it's, it's nobody's done this before. So it, it can be a little bit uh, intimidating, but I, I do like the fact that we do need to create music in the language of the people so they can, because linguistics, you know, Dr. Winters teaches us, or, and, and I call it the fantastic four, my science is based on four things, anthropology, archaeology, linguistics, and law. And in any debate, when those four things are present, whoever comes with that fantastic four wins the debate, wins the argument, period. So linguistics is radically important to understand how to interrupt a uh, signal and to have a song that says nothing's wrong with black people, something happened to black people in Kiswahili or in the native tongue, that's critical. That's critical because we see ourselves and hear ourselves in and through our language. So I, I appreciate that, Nielsi. I got a question, Nielsi. You said it's uh, four languages, four languages spoken in uh, in uh, the DRC, and is there a link language? Is there a language that everybody learns so that you guys can talk? I mean, that 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 that, that maybe includes Kiswahili, Kikongo, etc. Is there a link language? Uh, there is in the sense that. Uh... We do have Linga Franca. You, you would find that, uh, however big the country is, most of the people of the DRC speak one of the two, one, two, three, or all, all four languages. Because ultimately, without knowing it, they are etymologically linked and very, very linked. So, Kiswahili, uh, Kikongo would be the mother language that has generated what is called. Kingwana, actually, not Kiswahili. Kis -kis Kiswahili, Swahili is not an African word, it's an Arabic word. It's Kingwana and Chiluba is related and Lingala. They're, they're all related. If you are in the northwest, all the way to the southwest, you could get by with Lingala. In the other part, northeast, southeast, you could get by with Kiswahili. Because we are Ultimately, uh, people who do not, people of peace, uh, especially in the capital, you would intermarry whether you come from wherever. So you end up learning each other's languages and that's never been a problem. Uh, the problem is at a different level. I don't know if this makes sense. The Congo is in itself, the, the DR Congo and neighboring country, a linguistic study case. Uh, the, 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 there is no barrier. Uh, unlike in many African countries, we are able to interact in one of the lingua franca, which is an indigenous language. Some have to go uh, like Nigeria, for, for instance, in English only, or in Cameroon, they would have to use French or English. We are able to retain our own language and interact with whoever uh, is part of the DRC. And that's a plus point among the many problems we have. So that's that. Yeah, thank you for that answer. You know, uh, Reverend uh, Matthews, uh, when we come back, you, you made a very important point. You brought the fact that when you first uh, brought Imhotep on your did a show uh, before the show, that the, uh, the somehow the, the 
the, the memes of, 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 the, uh, of YouTube want to say that you had done something wrong. You know, mm -hmm. you know I, I find it very interesting that you was able to counter that AI. I mean, how, how did you do that? How did you conquer that AI so that it didn't really impact negatively on that, on that following program? How'd you do that? 30, 30, 30, my sure it's 30 freaking years of SEO and internet marketing and books and seminars and workshops. Ah, um, everything is driven in this system and technology is driven by uh, algebra. I'm not good at algebra. I don't know how to do algebra, but I just know how to do algebraic, uh, understanding algebraic mathematics, which are algorithms, translated or transferred to algorithms, uh, that one of the things I teach uh, my students is with Google. So the clients that I had, I had to get that whatever they were promoting, I had to, I, it, if it was a book, I had to manipulate Amazon algorithms to get that book to number one in that category. If it was uh, a, a seminar or a web or a workshop or what have you, I would have to manipulate Google or or YouTube algorithms because social algorithms they're they're different but they're pretty much they're similar as well. And what I discovered with uh, Google uh, in particular. Uh, and what's known as the SERPs. SERPs stands for Search uh, Engine Results Pages. So every time you do a search on Google, it gives you 10 results. Those 10 results are based on three factors, value, significance, and relevance. And there's a number that's associated with value, significance, and relevance. And so how long has that site been up? Uh, that is going to determine the value and the authority of that particular site that they're going to send you and, and put at the top of the search engines uh, 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 results page. That so for instance, just buying a domain, let's say you buy a, a domain and you park it. If you purchase that domain and you only purchase for one year, it automatically sends a, a, a signal to Google that this is not a serious site. It's not gonna be around because it's only a year. That's why they have the default of five years. Five years, that means, oh, they're going to be serious. And so now I'm going to, the algorithms are going to ascribe authority, value, significance, and relevance to that domain. Just by the difference between buying one year of, 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 of hosting or parking a domain versus five years. How was I able to counter the signals of algorithm. Well, think about what I do. Think about all of the scholars over the last 10, 15 years. It's been excruciatingly hard to get their message out without being censored. And 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 I'm being censored. I only have 60,000 uh, subscribers. I should be well into the millions uh, by, by now. But I personally know, because I've received emails from them, that they are withholding subscribers. They're not allowing certain videos to be shown in other people's um, uh, uh, channels when they're, when they're searching that's like-minded. So what I do to counter that is I do what's uh, uh, what's the term um, that that uh, uh, Patel is a guy named Patel, great SEO guy. Uh, uh, he calls it um, omni-channel marketing. Omni-channel marketing is if YouTube doesn't like you, then you stream to LinkedIn and Twitter and fa Facebook, and you stream to multiple channels to counter each channel. So what you don't get on YouTube, you're gonna get on Facebook. You don't get it on Facebook, you're gonna get it on LinkedIn. You don't get it on LinkedIn, you're gonna get it on Twitter. So that way the message must come through somehow, some way. Now, something is wrong with black people uh, or something happened to blackpeople.com is, is, is now we know in the algorithms and, and flagged, a red flag comes up if I put that link at the top of the page or somewhere within the page. So what do I do? I shorten the link, still goes to the same URL. I just shorten the link 
But also, if you notice, look at my meme behind me. This is a meme that was created by Yoshi Mod. There's the visual that they can't tag because it's not a, it's no words. It's just showing nothing is wrong with blackpeople.com. We're trying to get my finger right. There we go. Nothing is wrong with blackpeople.com. So a person who's going to see me, listen to me, they're going to look, 90% of the people are going to look and say, what is that? Let me go check it out. That's all I need. That's how I counter the narrative. Uh, as an SEO and as an internet marketer, uh, I've gotten copyright flags, but not anything that jeopardizes my 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 channel because I, I, I know how to manipulate it. That's why certain things I put on Patreon, certain things I can't talk about, like if it's a C word, COVID or anything, can't talk about that kind of stuff. I have to put that in a hidden platform because I work with Dr. Elaine Ferguson and we know the algorithms of the medical community, the mean plexus of that and what that does to counter and stifle the decisions and the signals. So I'm a unique kind of cat because I have this technology background, uh, but I'm also a metaphysician, African sacred scientist and a researcher and philosopher. So I put all of these things together to to attract someone like a sister Shanice, because you got to know what the hell you're talking about if you're going to be on Sister Shanice's show and platform. She don't ask just anybody on her platform. So um, I'm, I'm just, I just know, I know how to interrupt these people. I just, because I do it every day. I have to, because part of my job prior to coming into this uh, particular incarnation of my work is I had to counter uh, all of the, you know, I, I had to work with Kiyosaki and Susie Ehrman and uh, Robert, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, and, and they, they would give us like impossible goals. Like, how do you get to a bestseller on, how do you get a New York Times bestseller before the book comes out? What? So being in those think tanks, you learn how to manipulate uh, the marketing. And, 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 and I'm, a, I'm a strategist, so I take my time. I don't just throw stuff out there. I test it look for the holes, fill the holes, come back, put it out, present it to the community. And then I let you all decide if it's viable and if it makes sense. Now, as you know, Dr. Winters, some of the powers that be, other scholars, other elders, they know this of me, but now because you said this, uh, something to the effect that I shifted, I changed and shifted from being an interviewer to being the interviewee. So none of these people recognize that I had this level uh, of scholarship. They knew I had the technology aspect of it and they used me uh, for that, but they didn't know that I had this other background where I am doing these interviews over the last 15 years to get the language and the linguistics of this group called the Hotep group or the woke group. What's the language? What's the frequency? So once I found the language and the frequency, and then I realized it was a first frequency based on first sight consciousness, then I was able to say, okay, I have enough intel to now put together my framework for frequencies, for you know, trauma, so on and so forth, to bring this out as a legitimate uh, counter or an addition to what Dr. Welsing has brought us, to what Chancellor Williams has brought us, and some of the some of the frameworks of uh, uh, Amos Wilson uh, has brought us, so that we can have something moving forward to young people that they can scientifically say this ish works. So that's how I was able to counter, and I'm able to manipulate and maneuver. Uh, the uh, it's getting harder. I ain't gonna lie about that. It's getting harder, but you you know what I teach. Uh, my clients is, uh, and, and Yoshi does this kind of intuitive, intuitively. Um, in a music video, you can say things that you can't say if it's just the word. But in a music video with vignettes that's moving so fast, it, it, the algorithms can't catch that. But it's, it's, it's so, so once we understand, and he created a different title. I think my title is Nothing is Wrong with BlackPeople.com. His is something happened to black people, right? That's a different algorithmic set that has a different set of what's known as values, significance, and relevance. Now, here's a trick. I took these three algorithmic processes in SEO 
and I applied them to my everyday life and how I handle uh, and create my social circuit. So if a person doesn't have value, significance, or relevance, I don't spend time or waste time with them. So I now determine ahead of time who I'm going to have in my inner circle, who I'm going to talk to on the phone, who I'm going to return the phone call to, who I'm going to return an email to, based upon relevance, significance, and value. And so what you do is that causes you to become the thinker who thinks the thought, it causes you to boss up, it causes you to become so strategic in thinking that you don't allow any signal interruptions or distractions. And I think that's where Naosi says, this is really complicated. It is, but it isn't. But only the, the, the goal is, is to get all African minds back to the point where we could think again. There was a point when we didn't have opposition to think. So we were able to create because we had no opposition. There was no interruption. There was no trauma. There was no stress. That's where I'm at. And what I have mastered and still working the tools to do so, but this is what we're going to transfer and teach to the community, particularly our young people, because they have less trauma uh, time with their trauma, they will be able to pick up on this message and move mountains. And Dr. Nichols teaches us, it only takes one generation. We can change this in one mimetic cycle, one generation, everything can change. And so my science and research is based on that. You know, that's, uh, that's great to know because no, it, no. It, it allows us to have hope. Yes, it does. Well, nobody, uh, let me at this nobody, point, just nobody in our group really has technology behind it and understands that. And that's why I think what I bring to the table is unique is because you've got Kabla, James, Leonard Jeffries, Wade Nobles, yourself, Imhotep, Oba the Shaka, uh, the Nateri Nelson. They're phenomenal scholars. Their marketing is, they, they have no clue. They have no idea what they're doing uh, to get the message out. And there is no cohesion. There's no, there's nothing that people are going to repeat. I also study, this is crazy, but I study the comics and I study comedy because in order to create an effective comic, a comic must master language and they must master the ability to have something that you remember. So I forgot who it was, but it's like, when I come on, I say, I hope I'm funny. We automatically know that's Richard Pryor. That's a mean plex. It's so powerful that you remember it 40 years, 50 years later. What comic has a joke that you remember? What movie do you go to that you remember? That is going to show relevance, significance, and value. And that's what we need to teach our people because we're just too distracted, calling each other up, talking about nothing, and we're not going towards anything. Our job in this work is to constantly signal interrupt, increase our first sight consciousness, increase our first frequency, so that we can become the living expression of AMA on Earth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just um, let me just interrupt here to welcome everybody who's watching us uh, live via YouTube. Uh, I can see your messages in the chats. Lots of messages uh, and comments in the chat there. Oh, yeah, uh, I just Dr. saw Sherwin. Oh, fantastic. And, um, you know, there, there's comments about uh, from someone saying, I want to be uh, an SEO student of Rev Shop. <laughs> 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 I know you've dropped some powerful messages and lessons, you know, in this presentation. You really have. We're coming away with a Thank bag you. of tools here. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that, you know, we go into a bit more in how we can counter, you know, uh, the second frequency narrative as well. Because, you know, you, you've just showed us the importance, the real importance of, you know, being able to come back with our own narrative, our own messages, and then getting it out there. And so, mm -hmm. you know, welcome to everybody uh, in the chat uh, and thank you for your comments. Uh, we see you there. Lots of big up uh, to you, Dr. Rev, and to you, uh, you. Dr. Uh, Clyde Winters as well. So um, if I can just go back to the presentation. Wow, wow, sure. wow. You was talking about the- I love it when you say that. 
I just love it when you say that. Wow, wow, wow. Nobody says that like that. I just love <laughs> you that. know, I didn't even realize I'm I sorry. say it. <laughs> oh, it's just <laughs> awesome. I'm saying it now. I actually end up start saying it. Like when I see someone like wow, 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 I'm like, oh, I'm trying to like get out of my head, Sister Shanice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Oh, I Wait, love I'm that. Actually, five minutes or so before the end of the show, let's let everybody know what's happening next Thursday with African Liberation Day. Um, oh, yeah. As well. Yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely uh, let everybody know about that so that they yeah, can join us. Um, but yeah, you were talking about, you know, as well as, you know, the power, you know, of the message and how um, it's kind of impacting and compounded <clears throat> through their media. And they have, obviously, don't they, mm -hmm. their media platform that they can use to get out their memes and their messages. And they also have their think tanks that very quickly come up with these, you know, memes. And you, you, you're you talking absolutely. about absolutely to do the same, which I think is absolutely brilliant because we certainly do need it. If we had, you know, a whole group of us all coming out with the same messages and the same lines and the same schools of thought, I think, you know, that that could definitely be powerful. And just to touch on a conversation that we was having um, on my show as well, and you've touched on it here as well, and that's the, the power of religion also mm. and how religion is used uh, to mm -hmm. convey the, the similar sort of messages that you were talking about. And we were talking about, for example, um, you know, the, the Arab religion and the Christian religion and how both those religions have created this ideology of black inferiority. So within mm. the Arab religion, they've got the black inferiority uh, complex that a, most, a lot of black Arabs suffer from. And then in the Christian religion, everybody worshiping the white Jesus on the cross, you get the black superior inferiority complex as well with the, with the devil being black and all the rest of it. And so, you know, uh, they've created these indoctrinations that go with their Mimi complexes. So, you know, it's it's in the religion. What, what did you call it? You call it Mimi? You call it Mimi? It's, 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 that's so cute. That is adorable. That is adorable, Sister Shanice. I'm just loving you so much right now. It's, it's called me. It's called Meme. Not me, me, uh, but I, I, it looks like a me, me, but it's not. It's a me. <laughs> I love you so. It's a meme. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So meme like people will be going like, well, I was I was working on some memes. Oh, is that right? Oh, because right. everybody's gonna be like, oh, that's good. Oh, she's yeah, absolutely. That's just phenomenal. I love that. And, you know, <laughs> Go ahead. The power of it. The power of it, and 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 you know the whole kind of framework that you use to put across. Mm. The, the power of these, not memes. <laughs> Sounds of the memes. It takes a moment. It takes a moment. I didn't pronounce it correctly when I first heard it either. I was like, what? Meme? Meme? My uh, mind? Okay. Uh, so, you know, we are going to have to, as well as coming out with, you know, these strap lines and these powerful messages, somehow be able to undergird it with some indoctrination, a whole school of thought. And I think we were getting there to some extent, don't you think, with the Black Power movement and the Black yes. Power messages? Absolutely, you know, absolutely, 100%. Before social media, we were proud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That, that but think about it. Back. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. Who was it, though? It was James Brown. It was yeah. James Brown that yeah. took it yeah. musically. You see yeah. how it, that's why Yoshi Ma, he doesn't know how important he is yeah. to this process because yeah. you have young to have music. And black. I, young when and I work black. with Reverend Dr. Yeah, when I work with Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright, Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright was the Obama's uh, minister and married the Obamas. And I sat with him on his media ministry for six months and and I interviewed him every, you know, every Sunday. One of the things that he told me, he says, Philippe. You cannot have a ministry without music. It just will not happen. You, it, it wouldn't even be a ministry. It might be a, a think tank. It might be a, a movement. But it ain't a ministry until you have music. And so the Black Panther Party, the Black Power Generation, all of that was fueled by the mute Marvin Gaye, James Brown. I'm, say it loud. I'm Black and I'm proud. 
music is 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 the message. It's it's like what real, what Yoshi does is analogous to what Harriet Tubman did with the quilt. It's a hidden message that they can't decipher the code. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. but it helps mm -hmm. us. Now remember, you talked about religion, goddess. All right, so religion is based upon fear. But first, in order to make you fearful, I have to create a threat. So the threat is, is I have to take your spirituality and create a false God and show you that that God has certain privileges that your God doesn't have. And now if you don't cater to this God, this white boy on a stick, then something bad's going to happen to you and you will be ostracized. And remember, they use extreme violence mm. to, to, to put this on us. This is not, today we're complicit because we're psychologically tortured and beat up. So we're our own worst enemies. But there was a time when they, would, they had to beat this into you mm. and threaten your life. So you have to understand the epigenetics of that, the generational, historical, memetical uh, transmission of that, but it's still ideology and it can be countered. Mm -hmm. So we have to clean up the trauma of the memes that have been put into us because all that is is fear. Now, here's what I do know and here's what I'm seeing and studying. We are scaring the ish out of them. Now, one memeplex that is really scaring second frequency is critical race theory. Critical race theory is scaring the ish out of white folks, particularly in Florida. Florida is passing laws to the degree where if you teach critical race theory, you can be fired and prosecuted as a teacher. They have had uh, teachers fired for just having a student look up the term critical race. Theory. So we know where they're. So uh, we have to create auto and exotoxic means to counter them. We our exotoxic means that harm them is knowledge and being able to see through their BS and seeing their mean plexus. Because the moment you can see their signal, signal is ineffective. They've been caught. They've been captured. They're vulnerable. We have to do more of this. And so that's the pushback. So I know where we need to go uh, in terms of countering this, this narrative, but Dr. Winters is, is the God. And the reason he's the God is because wow. every week, yeah, every week he comes out and he teaches us, if you get caught up in this heritage crap, which is nothing more than mean plexus, like, you know, Yaakov, if I'm a Moor, if I'm a Hebrew Israelite, if I'm a Christian, if I'm a Jew, if I, all of those are mean plexus. If you get caught up in the mean plexus and not the overarching mean plex of ancestry, you are going to lose. You are not going to win because it has been shown for thousands of years. That's the divide and conquer strategy. I have to pit you against someone else to get control of you and your children. We have the ability to do the same thing with them. And that's what this science is going to do. Great. It's a work that's definitely needed. Uh, what they also do, and you, you just touched on it again there and, and reminded us that it's, it's you know, in our, our DNA almost, and that's the trauma. They use fear. And as you were saying, I could see, you know, how they use fear and instilled fear in us on the plantations mm -hmm. uh, during uh, the enslavement era. I can see how they're still, you know, instilling fear uh, and and violence uh, on the streets of America, on the streets of London, or wherever we are. And so, you know, they're they're showing us, you know, what they can do to us. And we see this when we see the images of our people on the continent, the proxy wars that's happening all over Africa. Mm. We can see, you know, the and this and we and as we were saying earlier, we feel the trauma when we see mm -hmm. all of this happening. And, and so there's a level at which we can counter uh, a lot of the memes, the memes, <laughs> and, you know, uh, 
<laughs> we can counter it uh, kind of um, intellectually, but then how do we counter the physical violence and, and the wars and, and, and the abuse and that side of things, Dr. Rev? So here's the rub. Everything comes full quantum, positive and negative. Every experience, every thought, every idea, everything comes with positive, negative energy. Uh, and, and, and when I say positive and negative, negative can be positive, positive can be negative. It's called full quantum. It's a universal law. It's a quantum physical law. It's the law of AMO. So that means that there are going to be negatives to positives, but you can't have a negative without a positive or a positive without a negative. The other thing that you also will learn when you start going into quantum mechanics is that there cannot be a problem without a solution. There cannot be a solution without a problem. Everything comes full quantum. Now, the job of second frequency is to keep us locked on one side so that we don't see the positives, so we can't think our way out. So how do I do that? I take the weakness of you. Now, understand social engineering created poverty. So I create poverty so that policing, law enforcement, uh, people who have low intellect uh, or, or low academia, they can go to school and get laborers, blue collars, so that blue collar people can have a job. Firemen, law enforcement, all of these people, they need a job. How do, why, why, how, how do, how, how do we keep them employed? We have to create neighborhoods, spacing, race technology. We have to create neighborhoods uh, where people can't get out and can't get their needs met. We have to make sure that they never econo become economically viable, and we have to make sure that they're academically castrated. So they have to be ignorant and they have to be poor. If they're ignorant and poor, that's food for us. So now we can pay our cops and we can create scenario, uh, multiple scenarios uh, of, of crime. We can create the concept of drugs. We can create the, the war on drugs and all of that even before there was an actual <laughs> war on drugs. Now, how many of us get caught up because we're looking at our people getting killed and dying but where are the thinkers that are thinking the thought that's making the thing so that we can get out of this? Mm -hmm. The reason that they do this is to distract us and do exactly, and ask the question that you just asked. Well, what about mm -hmm. all of this that's happening here? Well, if I deal with all of this that's happening here, I can't mm -hmm. figure out how to destroy you. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out how to counter your, your signal. So my job mm -hmm. is to figure out I'm looking at every kind of way to call excess mortality. I'm looking at how are they dying? How are they killing themselves? And here is another trick, family, that many of us don't even recognize that the power that we have. Every time we do this affirmation, every time Sister Shanice comes on, every time Brother Amani, I just see Brother Amani, I love him because I love the, uh, the, the, the uh, Ma'at behind him. I didn't know he was here. I was like, oh my God, there he is. Um, uh, every time, we put out content, it goes into the Akashic Records and creates excess mortality to them. Now, our mistake is that we want tit for tat. We want to see them hurt just like they hurt us. That ain't how it works. I'm studying weather patterns, weather systems. I'm studying birth dearth. I'm studying uh, excess mortality. I'm studying autogenocide. Every time we think positively and strategically and with deliberate intent, it creates excess mortality for them, which another term could, uh, uh, for that would be Dr. Fred, uh, Chris Welsey's uh, genetic annihilation. There has never been a group of, of uh, in humanity on planet Earth that kills and hunts their own people. Never happened before, ever. They're the first and only group that hunt, this is called fascination violence, by the way. You might've saw one of my, uh, nothing is wrong with us uh, 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 lectures that I do on Sunday, where I talk about, this is the first group that literally gets sexual pleasure from hunting its own people, its own kind. So here's the rub. So in the laws of ecology, dogs don't hunt and kill dogs. 
Cats don't hunt and kill cats. Lions don't hunt and kill lions. So what is this species? Because I got in trouble on your platform once because I said something about there are different species and there was a white guy in the chat said, what are you calling that species for? What are you, I was like, motherfucker, you're not real. Anyway, so, <laughs> oh, bitch, um, take your white ass on somebody. So, so a species would not hunt and kill itself unless that species is psychopathic and sociopathic and is not supposed to be on this planet. Now, do we have the power militarily to conquer them? No, but guess who does? Ama and Ma'at. Because here's the thing, M millions of them with an M have died and are dying, not one shot fired. So it doesn't matter how many guns they buy, it doesn't matter how much they shore up their military, stop all this distraction shit. Look at what's killing them and then give energy to what is killing them. Help Alma out. <laughs> give frequency and signaling to allow this group to remove themselves with Alma's help because they're antithetical to nature. So let the autogenocide begin. Our problem, our rub, is we're in the way because we work for some of these people. We work with some of these people. My God, some of them are in the family. Okay, I get it. But look at it as anybody who has cancer or terminal illness that dies off and that's it. No differently than what uh, Sheikh out the joke when he talks about the six transmutations of the human family from Athropithecus, uh, I think it's Gracile to Robustus to the Homo sapien line and sapien sapien the sapien and the sapien say, this is a group that as the, even in scripture says, this has not come to stay, this has come to pass. They have come to pass, but we're, we're looking at it because we want tit for tat. If they choke us out, we want to choke them out. No, because you don't know how many of them died that day. When we saw the guy cho choking uh, the brother out, we don't know how many of them in his family died. We don't know how many people around him, how many white people, second frequency, didn't didn't make it. That is first sight consciousness. And we're elevating this to a higher level that has never been done before. But I'm looking at how this group works and how they move. And we, like I said, like Joey with the handlebars, we're on Joey's bike and, and Joey is driving off the cliff with us on the handlebars. We got to get off the handlebars, get our own bike and haul ass the opposite way back to my aunt, back to the consciousness back to the frequency before the conflict and the consciousness before the conflict. Wow, thank you so much for that. Ubuntu <clears throat> Rise Up in the chat is saying brilliant. Show. Oh, and let me, let me, let me an, uh, answer Cheryl Lynn. Cheryl asked a question in, 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 the, in the Zoom chat, Dr. Shock regarding Facebook restriction, should we always fight this restriction? No, work around it. Because sometimes when you fight, then you let them know they're winning. Don't, mm -hmm. don't let them know you're signaling. This is about counterintelligence. You have to be militarily, you have to th think like a CIA agent, think like a spy. You know, this is you know, this is spy craft, the spiritual spy craft, because our spirituality is spy craft in them. And so we have to start thinking along that line that we are the thinkers who think the thought. We created thought, <laughs> we created language, we created everything. Are you telling me we don't have the mastery over this? Bullshit. So even Clyde tells us every week, go to the Akashic Records. We have a memory of 200 plus thousand years that's stored there. We can think anything, outthink ourselves in any situation. Will it be hard? Hell yeah. Because the law of thermodynamics teaches us the energy can't be destroyed. So their energy is real. It's a signal. Our energy is real. It's a signal. So you don't give your position away by complaining, oh, I don't want this restrict. I don't want to give you my position. You already told me your position by flagging my content. You're already letting me know, oh, I got you, baby. This is what's upsetting you. Something is wrong. Nothing is wrong with blackpeople.com. That's effing with you right now? Oh, really? Oh, baby, just wait until I create some more memes and, and, and algorithmic mathematics to tear your ass apart. So this is the difference that I bring uh, to quote unquote the scholars and scholarship within 
the diaspora for the for the community. Sorry for the interruption, my beloved goddess. Oh, that's okay. I mean, there's so much more, you know, that needs to be said. I've just checked the time. We're three minutes away from the top of the hour. And so many more questions to ask. We could go <laughs> on for another hour easily. And I, and I wanted to bring back Brother Lucy, and I wanted to bring back Dr. Ty Winters and the Ty. And then, and you mentioned uh, uh, Brother Imani in the chat. It would have been wonderful to have heard him say something as well. The time well, okay. I know. Can I, can I? Can I know it's you know one of the hardest things is because I do a talk show, you do a talk show, we always talk showing each other. It's like <laughs> in order, we back we we go back and forth from being interviewer to be an interviewee. I know this is your platform and your show, but is it possible to have just a couple of words from Brother Amani? Because <laughs> I just love him so. Because we're gonna be together, you and I, next Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've got the flyer for that. Okay. Yes, uh, we yes. have Brother Imani. Brother Imani, are you happy to give us a couple of uh, um, minutes? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Let's let's uh, bring on Brother uh, Imani uh, and add him here for a, a couple of minutes. Rise up, rise up. Welcome. I'm Jambo, Jamal. I'm Jambo. I was in Kisahili. But my brother is teaching me that stuff I didn't know. That I knew that, a, that Sahili was an Arabic word, but I didn't know the proper words. So thank you, my brother, for it. For um uh, for enlightening me and and for the family, but yeah, Hamjamba Jamal, which basically means greeting kindred. My name is in, uh, Imani Nassau, and I'm from the Pan African Congress Movement UK, and we're holding a the Africa Liberation Day on the 25th of uh, May, uh, and that's going to be at 6 p. Uh, and that's going to be online on YouTube. You go to PACM TV channel. And there you'll see Africa Liberation Day, and there will be a wonderful Dada Shanice, also uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Philip Shock Matthews, who's, who's enlightened us today and, and before. Uh, also, also, we have um, the renowned warrior scholar, Baba Professor James Small. And uh, we also have our uh, dear activist sister from Malawi, uh, Sister um, Asha Sepanit Wudasi. Um, who will be there as well? And we're having a conversation on the uh, the Grand African Renaissance, uh, and because that's the theme for for the second year that we're using the theme of the Grand African Renaissance, and it's Grand African Renaissance for, uh, Part Two. And the question that's going to be discussed in the in in our wonderful panel is how do we support the Grand African Renaissance as individually and as a people. And, and basically what, why, what we said about the Grand African Renaissance is this. We as African people, as, as the Dr. Shock has, has, has excellently um, explained to us, we've been interrupted. We've moved away from our, our authentic African culture, which is, as we understand it, based on communalism and also the African constitution that our great elder, Chancellor Williams, um, uh, uh, Gave to us in the the black uh, into the destruction of black civilization. We've moved away. We moved away from that. Why have we moved? Why have we? Why have we moved away from from that? Uh, se several things. But there's there was a time when we kept to our traditions, but then we moved away from that, and we moved away from communism to feudalism. And when we moved to away to that, where the instead of everybody owning the land and everybody working together, it, we, you moved to a, po a position where the king was in, or the queen owned or led, led, the, pe led the people or owned the land. And once we moved in to start to move away from our traditional, uh, traditional sense and from Amma, from Maat, that's when our enemies could take, uh, could, um, could take advantage. And so, and so all the things that we, we, we know about Regarding enslavement, regarding colonialism, neo-colonialism, and the, and the, and the interruptions we see with ourselves of how we don't join together. So it's about how do we get back to self? How do we get back to self? How do we return to ourselves? And that really is where we look at the works of Neely Fuller and say that we have to get back to those areas. That he that he um, described the nine uh, nine in uh, nine areas 
where it's on spirituality, languages, health, economics, politics, entertainment, education, labor, law, sex, and war. We have to return to our true understanding of that. But as, as Dr. Shock has explained, but we've also got to understand how they're used against us, how they used us in, in as he in his book in the in in the in the in the cut the book he, he's nearly his book shows that it's a code of white of white supremacy, which um uh, 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 Dr. Shock has said in a second frequency. So it very much meshes with that. And our whole idea is that. This is a long-term journey, and so that's why we're taking it every year, having the same, the same, uh, the set, the same theme, and looking at these areas and coming up with practical ways, but not just by ourselves, with uh, Africans of like mind, whether individually or as organisations, and join the dots to and join together, join the ideas of all of Dr. Shark and and, and Baba Smalls, Abati Shaka, and, and Francis Cress, uh, the, uh, Mama Francis Cress Wilson, and so many and so others and activists and people who are, are working as well to pull together and join the dots because we understand that there's more than enough money, there's more than enough resources. The issue is about coming us back to our first frequency and joining back together. So that's what the Africa Liberation Day is going to be about on the first day. On the second day, on the 29th of March, that's going to be live in Manchester. And uh, there we'll be having... Uh, uh, reasonings on mental health and also on youth and also uh, uh, the main speaker is the great historian uh, brother Robin Walker and that's and if you are in England and in Manchester that runs from the doors open at 10 a.m and it runs all the way to 9 p.m 10 pounds in entry fee so yeah, and Mama, Mama Bello is with you too. Uh, Baina Bello is with you too. Is she, she, that? Uh, she is. Uh, she she is, uh, uh, virtually she's going to be. We had asked. Okay. Her, okay. We had, we had asked her about what is happening in AET for her to explain to us what's happened, and she kindly yeah. put down put down in 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 writing about how she saw it. You know, not only in practically and politically, but spiritually, about mm -hmm. how we how we mm -hmm. how we combat it. It's just like you were saying, my dear my dear elder brother, uh, Doctor Shock. It's about the interruption. She's very clear, mm -hmm. like, like you mm -hmm. say, this isn't about a physical war, this is a spiritual war. That's and, right. And it is, and it is so much in the, the and, and about the, as you know, about the second frequency, we have to realize that as we are the first frequency, we created them with the energy. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're here for our lesson. They're to give us a warning of what we shouldn't be. What, where we that's not right. have to go. That's right. And that that's we right. are the source. There can be no, right. there, there is no existence without us. We are the first that's ones. Correct. We are the source. We are the expression of the create of the creator. And so there is, there, is, there, there is no, there is nothing beyond us. That's, you know, there is no beginning and there is no end to us. Yeah, Hakuna let's, get you, let's get you a song with Yoshi Ma. You need to be connected with Yoshi Ma and get a song out. I love that. You got yes. bars, brother. <laughs> You but, got you know, bars. So, so that's so that's 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 the, that's the key, and so and absolutely, in fact, as I said, we you know we stop when we try to be them and fight them. They see us coming. We need right. to get back to our own way, our African Renaissance. Get back to our own power, our own spirituality, right. because nobody spends that much time and that much effort. Come on, to come stop on, somebody. If you're not come on. Of them. Because Come on! Yes, con. they know it's a con. Yes, they know. Yes. As soon as we, Flinders Petrie said, Flinders Petrie said it. You know, if ever they find out they're gods, this is over. The game it's is over. over. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yep. this Flinders Petrie, the English, <laughs> so the true. He understood this. So that's so this is so so about us is returning as you seem be out behind me, my heart. You know, oh, when, 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 you know, you know, because that power, uh, you, you don't even have to know what that means. You already feel it, don't you? Just that's by right. Looking, you feel that's it. That's right. And that's, that's our right. power. We don't have to do anything. What we all you have to do is come back to self. That's what they're for. They're to remind us, come back to self. Because you lost your way, yes. you know, the creator said, I'm going to have to give you some lashes. You know, mm -hmm. you, have you learned mm -hmm. your lesson? No, then. Now. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I think we learned. I think we learned. You know, now, now, my aunt, no problem. My aunt, 
Mahad says, thou shalt not steal. I messed with, I was messing with uh, Brother Amani when we first met. I said, now, if that, if that uh, uh, Ma'at comes up missing, I had nothing to do with it, brother. I swear to God. This, it, it would be a travesty if that just came up missing. But don't look over here in the United States for it. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Because, you know, I'm an Athian. I don't steal. I could never do that. <laughs> yes. Asante Sana. That's a declaration. Asante. Thank you, brother. Asante Sana. Love you. Asante Sana. Let me just quickly give uh, our, our beloved Dr. Clive Winters uh, a couple of minutes to have a few, uh, leave us with the, some last words, some departing words. Beloved, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I, you know, hearing these two gentlemen and They've got me excited about next week. I don't, I don't know what to do. And so then, but the main thing is this is that it's been a wonderful show. I, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody got something out of the show. And thank you so much, um, Shanice, for, for providing this for the people because we need, we need some remedies. We need to find ourselves and we need to be able to get away from all this trauma because no matter what we, what we think about, whenever we see people getting killed, it, it takes us back to, to the experiences of our great, great, great grandparents and beyond. And so then we have to fight this. And, and, and we are a unique people because we came from the Western Hemisphere. And it's, it's sad, but it's true. But they've done things to us that have made us have certain traumas that we always try and overcome. And so thank you, Shanice, for trying to uh, help us to, to ameliorate this, these uh, problems and maybe go forward. Because we need all this, you know. And, uh, you know, it's very important. Thank you. We thank you. Okay. And I thank you so much for being part of this journey. And I am just so grateful to Emma, as we say, that I am, you know, during, I'm walking this journey at the same time as you, as Dr. Rev Shah, <laughs> as everybody in our audience. Uh, I can see Brother Nusi had his hand up, but Brother Nusi, we're out of time. You can hear from Brother Nusi also on my radio shows, uh, Galaxy Afui on a Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, I did have the ALD flyer up, uh, Brother Imani, as he was talking, so uh, people can rewind and get the uh, details from that flyer. Uh, we certainly look forward to you all joining us uh, next Thursday alongside, again, our beloved Rev. Dr. Philippe Shock Matthews, uh, Dr. Smalls, um, and our uh, beloved sister, uh, who we've got uh, on the panel as well, beloved Dr. Asha. Uh, Sefant uh, Wadasi, uh, and I'm honoured, honoured to be uh, on that platform as well. And uh, return to self, and for me, that means we've got to return to becoming once again the great ones that we were during the times of old, the great ones that build those monuments that created the very artistic and beautiful uh, uh, you know, model that you've got behind you there. When you think of the creativity, the artistry, and everything that went into that, and all of what Dr. Fleetshop was describing earlier in terms of us with the ability to read the cosmos and the stars and the sciences and, the, and everything that we did. We are great beyond our imagination. In my Absolutely. opinion, we are only operating at something like less than 5% of our potential. We have been so mm -hmm. dumbed down as a people. We are so lost to, as to the knowledge of who we are. We don't realize our greatness. You know, on my shows, we talk about evidence of us having the ability to teleport ourselves, to make ourselves invisible, to capture bullets, you know, from our behind, oh. you know, being wounded <laughs> and the wounds healing up magically within hours. You know, Dr. News is on the same level as me when we talk about, you know, the, the powers that we have on from the different realms that exist in the cosmos that we can't see. Radio waves, the music waves, and the music that we talk about and the power 
of the music. That is us operating on another frequency, a frequency that we can't see, but it's there, just like the microwave frequency, the radio wave frequencies, and all the other frequencies that our ancestors used to tap into and get energy from. When we return to self, and the sooner the better, you know, because I don't believe, say, you know, we cannot be eliminated and genocided out. Ask the Africans, the original Africans of Europe, talk to the original Africans. Africans of Australia, the original Africans of Argentina, the original Africans of America, of Canada, and everywhere else where we've been annihilated. I don't think we can be complacent and think that because we're on the earth, you know, we can't be annihilated out and genocided out. I think we better hurry up and return to our greatness and the knowledge of who we are so that we can counter, you know, this virus. Uh, on this planet that you say we created. I don't know. We tell Madame we could do something like that. But anyway, that's another story. So for family, family, <laughs> all of more strength. I can stay here all, all night. I'm going to have to have, you know, a session where we have a wonderful panel, such as the one that we've got with Brother Nusi on there. It's always got a lot to contribute and, and, and a couple of other speakers maybe because it's just beautiful when like-minded people come together and I thank you all for being part of the conversation today. To those in the audience, thank you so much. To those who joined us live on Zoom, Sherilyn, big up, big up. Uh, Marianne, Jacqueline, Yoshi, to all those who we can see and all those we can't see, we thank you so, so much uh, for joining us. And all be well. We will be black uh, next Wednesday, same time, where we're talking about African liberation with our very own Lida Bandaka. Wow, wow, wow. Reverend Dr. Philippe Shock, we love you so much. Dr. Love Clarence, you back. All the family, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming for you, Dr. Take care, Peters. Everyone. I need to wait from you. <laughs> Bye for that. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> anytime, anytime. Thank you. One love, family. One love. One love.